welcome into the studio and in this video I'm going to give you a brief overview of drawing fur using pastels. Now this cougar is from one of my long uh, video instructions on my Patreon art channel. So you can go there if you want to see all the details how I did the background and everything else over a few hours lesson. Now for some of the details, especially the darks you'll see at the beginning, I'm going to be using sharpened Conti sticks, but of course you can just as easily use pastel pencils. You can see they're sharpened on the ends, just on a bit of glass paper. And I'm going to use these like a pencil to actually draw in the dark markings. So that pan pastel underdrawing is pretty much was concentrating on the mid-tones. So as you can see, there's nothing very, very white or bright light on there and there's nothing other than around the eye that's very dark so this process now that I'm doing is putting in those darks and it's the same process I used when I did the wolf pastel probably about a year ago and you can see I'm not putting the dark markings everywhere they're actually just going roughly where the dark areas are on the reference photograph and I'm not doing little uh, picket fence lines or uniform as I keep mentioning we want random markings in there and they become more apparent when I'm doing areas that are not uh, not got as many dark markings as in so once I come around the lighter areas around the eye you see how I'll space those markings out more and you'll see the randomness that's in there but remember we still need to be going in the fur growth direction it's really critical at this stage and see if you sharpen both ends when you actually sharpen the first end then you haven't got to keep going back sharpening you can just flip it around medium firm pressure I'm not pushing too hard if I want a lighter marking, I'll just go much lighter with pressure. I don't need to keep changing the colours all the time. I've got that darkish brown Conti stick and I've got this black Conti stick and that's all I'm really going to be using probably for all of this stage. So you can see I've gone darker there than I actually require it to be and slightly larger as well because I'm going to come on top of these dark markings and pretty much going in between them roughly not exactly and you can see I'm moving quite quickly doing this to get those random marks but I'll come on top of this with definitely the lighter pastel pencils to put the upper layer of detail in and may even use some of the lighter Conti sticks as well because you can use them as a pencil if you haven't got the Conti sticks and I only really use them because it's much cheaper when you're uh, blocking in or, or doing something like this than to wave through your pencils very very quickly but you could actually do this stage with pencils as I show on my complete beginners tiger tutorial which only uses a few pencils so don't feel you've got to go out and buy a complete Conti stick set. And if you want to get Conti sticks, just start with a black and a brown. That's what I use most of the time, so it's really cheap. Now obviously this stage, even though I'm going quite quickly, takes time to do. Don't want to rush it. But just for your benefit at home, I'm going to speed this process up so you can actually see how I just start blocking in well or detailing the darks in this second layer Okay, so I've zoomed in even closer so you can get a much more detailed view again of how I'm going to block in the darks. And you can see 
now quite cl clearly the difference between the left and the right side where I've left areas for the highlights to go on top I like to keep my reference as close as possible remember colors are showing up different on the reference than on the pastel mat as I mentioned in all my videos so it's not that I've actually printed out the reference photo badly the wrong color or the wrong contrast when I'm looking at the reference I can see all the details on that right hand side and my actual finished or my drawing that I'm doing below is just a muted version of the top one so I haven't got those extreme highlights in yet and I haven't used my darkest dark pencils yet either so the secret with this don't push too hard make sure to leave some spaces in between for the highlights later and random lines going generally in the direction of fur growth and how the fur is laying on the animal this is what's creating that form and structure that's going to give us that three-dimensional real appearance So an area a lot find especially tricky and I know I did for quite a few years is this kind of bridge of the, the nose area and the mistake lots use or lots make is by using strokes that are too large and too long. It's very very short fur on here, a little bit longer than in lots of the big cats but I still need just more of a dab in motion. This is real time. So you can see I, I go quite quickly when you're doing your subject you don't have to go quickly but I find if you're going very very slow that's when you're more prone to actually doing these um, regimented straight up and down lines. I found over the years that if I you know kind of study the direction of the fur and then just speed up a bit to get a bit of randomness in my strokes it looks a lot better need lots of dark areas here and along the side as well but you can see already that left hand side is starting to look quite realistic and with the pans and perhaps just a little bit of highlight on top where if I'd gone lighter with the pans underneath I could have actually just left the drawing like that without really detailing it as dramatically and as extensively as I am going to in this video. So it'd be nice for me one day to actually do a subject like this and just go with the pans, get that underdrawing spot on with those the right brightness, the right colors, and then just put these darks on top. And I'll have a much looser feel, but sometimes, you know, sometimes with looseness, it can actually look um, a bit fresher and less overworked. Okay, time to start putting the upper layer of details on, so time to start with the pencils. Carbothello is the pencil I use more often than not for my wildlife art. But the pit pastels are quite similar as well, perhaps a little bit harder. You can see how I'm pretty much going in between the dark markings. but also overlapping some of them as well. Remember I can come back in with extreme darks like I am now with the pencil. And it's gonna be a case now of working with the lights and the darks, doing it this way. 
looking for realism now looking to really match the reference photo so I've got a fairly close it's out of shot for you but then you'll have access to my finished um, work photo anyway so you see exactly what I'm doing it's more critical for you to actually see what I'm doing rather than to be trying to copy everything so I'm just making this area a little bit darker before I put the highlights on top that's because I've noticed in the reference that this area needs a darker under layer otherwise it's all going to be too bright when I put the, the highlight on top of it So still using random strokes and by that don't forget I mean random as in they're not all lined up I keep on about it but it's absolutely critical but I'm not trying to copy every little stroke in every direction that I'm seeing on the photograph because then it will really turn out to be a very uh, rigid looking drawing and too contrived Now, for depth is all about layering. Okay, now if you think of the animal in real life, it's going to have many, many layers of fur building up. And that creates that, that feeling, that appearance of depth. That's what we need to do on the drawing because we've just got a flat surface to recreate it. Now, notice as I'm doing these marks, I'm still allowing plenty of the under layers to show through. The under layers are acting as the darks. These are the highlights on top. You can see as well, every stroke or two, I lift my pencil off the surface and I spin it around a bit. And that's making sure that I don't just get a flat edge on the pencil. So watch now. Lift it, turn it. Back down, lift it, turn it. You see I'm maintaining the point on the pencil. If I wasn't doing that I'd need to sharpen my pencil really, really frequently. Okay, so it's a habit for me now. I don't even think about twirling the pencil around. I lift it off, move it a little bit. And that's where I work the fur. So see that appearance now of, of getting much more depth in there. Now I can add some more colours in places, warming areas up. Acting almost like a glaze. Not hard pressure at all, really light pressure. Now with pastels, you need to think of how much detail you want to put in because we can only sharpen our pencils so much. Okay, so if you want lots and lots of details like this, it pays off for us to work a bit larger. Okay, but pastels can be fast as well. So we can get that large dramatic drawing in not much time at all. So you can see it's starting to look more detailed, more realistic. When you're doing something this large, it is going to take quite a while. Whole drawing took about ten and a half hours to do. Would have been substantially more than that if I tried to do this in coloured pencil. So I did it over around about four or five shorter sessions. So you can see the difference that I said now between the right side, which is pan pastel, with just the black conti on there and this side now which is starting to build more and more detailed layers and which side you prefer would be your prefer 
preference completely. Now working my way down from the eye towards the bridge of the nose and where people go wrong because they, they really have problems, lots of artists, with that area of the nose is because they're still doing long strokes. The strokes here on the big cats are generally really, really short. In fact, the um, cougar is probably the longer of the strokes. When you look at a, something like a lion, it's, it's much shorter than this. It's more of a stippling effect then rather than any length to the stroke. And these hairs, you can see they're pointing downwards. So they come from the eyes, swirl around and then point down towards the nose. But you really need to have an excellent reference photo if you put in this much detail in so you can really zoom into it or print it out large like I have so that you don't have confusing areas. Now if the photo is not that great quality, don't forget you can always go on the internet or do it the old fashioned way and get some books that has you know supplementary type of images for you. To, uh, to use so you can see at least see the direction that the fur is growing or the way it's swirling especially on the sides of the nose it normally swirls around okay so I think that's given you a pretty good understanding of basics of the the way I do fur with pastels as I said there's a full-length video of this one on my patreon art channel many hours of uh, detailed tutorials and you get access then to literally hundreds of hours of other tutorials as well. So there's loads of wildlife on there. There's um, dogs, cats, horses, you name it, frogs, reptiles. It's pretty much all on there on my Patreon channel. So see you all again real soon. Just wanted to quickly mention my Patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction. It's packed full of pastel videos oil videos as well and those videos are being added to new ones every single month i have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies and i take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details you see everything I do how I create my work but it's not just for beginners it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well and this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details tips and techniques and as mentioned, I've got lots of oil videos on there too. So there really is something for everybody. And you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just $4. Now over a thousand members strong. Hope to see you there soon.